This video is sponsored by iPolo, who sent me one of their ETH hash mini ASIC miners. So in this video, we're going to talk about what these things can do, what I like about them, who I think they're for, and how to get them set up and mining. I'm also going to talk about the advantages of being able to mine other ETH hash coins on them, like Ethereum Classic. There is, however, one thing that I will not be talking about in this video, and that is the profitability of mining on these things. And that is because I'll make a completely separate video covering that topic. And the reason for that is mainly because there are so many factors to take into consideration, like what coin you're mining, what what your electricity cost is, what price you're selling those coins at, and so on. But probably the biggest reason why I'm making that into a separate video is because we have the Ethereum merge into Proof of Stake happening in just a couple of days now. So it just makes a lot more sense to wait until after that's happened to see how that changes things. And finally in this video I'm also going to talk about some of the downsides to consider about mining on one of these. Warning, there are people pretending to be me in the comments and on social platforms. I'll never ask you to add me on WhatsApp or Telegram, and I'll never ask you to send me money, crypto, or your personal information. All right, so please be careful, use your common sense, and don't let any of these imposters fool you. All right, now back to the video. So what is this thing? Well, it is a mini ASIC miner for mining cryptocurrency. And according to iPolo's website, it can mine Ethereum, Ethereum Classic, Zilliqa, Quark Chain and Callisto. And apparently it is also able to mine that new Ethereum proof of work fork, whatever. They have a few different models available on their website and this specific one mines at 300 mega hash with a power consumption of about 240 watts. It has 5.8 gigabytes of available memory and can use both a wired ethernet connection or Wi-Fi. And if you want to get one, there will be a link in the video description to iPolo's website. So who are these miners for? Well, I believe they are for two different types of people mainly. They are either for people who just want to get into mining and want to have something that's quick and easy to set up and that they can then pretty much just forget about. They set it and forget it type of miner. And the other type of people that I believe this kind of miner is for is people who are interested in mining specifically one of the coins that these things can mine. For example, you have your mindset on mining Ethereum Classic and want one of the best miners for it in this price class. Well then you're probably interested in one of these. So what do I like about these things? Well, you know when you mentioned the Ethereum merge to proof of stake and people say, oh, GPUs won't be profitable to mine with on other coins like Ethereum Classic anymore because of all of the ASICs that will move over from Ethereum to Ethereum Classic. Well, this is one of those ASICs. And the reason people say that is because of the high amount of hash rate per watt of power that these things get. Because these things have much better mining efficiency, meaning how much hash rate they get per watt of electricity than a GPU. And that allows them to stay profitable in mining, even in times when coin prices dip really low, electricity prices shoot up sky high, or there's a massive influx of new miners on a coin's network. Now, setting these miners up is an absolute breeze. And I'm gonna walk you through the whole process right here and right now. So when you first get it, just plug it into power and hook it up to either Ethernet or Wi-Fi. You can then just use a network scanning app to find the internal IP address of the miner. And I just used one called Fing for my iPhone. And it's a whole lot less scary than it sounds. It's basically just you open the app, log into your Wi-Fi on your phone, and then hit scan network. And it will show a list of all of the devices that are hooked up to the internet on your network. And you'll see iPolo there and it will say a IP address. It will just be like a little list of numbers. And then just take that IP number, paste it into the address bar of your web browser, and you will be met by something like this, which is the login screen to the interface for your miner. So then you just need to log into your miner and the default username and password is root and root. And you can then change that later. So you just hit root root and then log in. So we are now in the interface for this miner. And what we need to do then is just come in here to miner configuration. We can change these settings to get it up and mining. We just need a few things first. So the very first thing you need to do is pick what coin you're gonna mine on this thing. And for this example, I'm gonna pick Ethereum Classic. You then need a wallet for that coin. And I'm not gonna show you how to set that up in this video specifically, but if you need to be pointed in the right direction, Zell Core or Exodus are two good and easy to set up examples. You then need to pick a mining pool. You can of course also choose to solo mine on these things, but for the sake of this video, I'm gonna go with pool mining just to minimize the reliance on luck in our mining. So to find a mining pool, I always come to this website, miningpoolstats.stream, and then I just navigate to the coin that I wanna mine, which in this case is Ethereum Classic. 
and what it gives you is just a long list of the pools that are available to mine Ethereum Classic on right now. And I'm going to go with Hero Miners because that is a pool I've used before and have had good experiences with. You then need to find the stratum address and the port number to be able to connect to the pool and most pools make it very easy to find these things, usually under a section called how to connect or start mining or something similar. So if you click on Hero Miners here, you can see it has a little icon up here that just says start. And here we get all of the information we need. So we get the Stratum server address here. And Hero Miners actually has servers all around the world to make sure that your connection will be as fast as possible, which is a very good thing. So you can pick all of these different servers. These are the different Stratum addresses you would pick between. Uh, I'm going to go with the Germany one. So I'm just going to copy this here. And then we have the port number here. After that, all we need to do is go back to our iPolo interface here and just enter in all of these settings here. So you can see we have the Stratum address here. I have an old one for two miners here. So I'm just going to paste my hero miners one in here like so. And then we can see the number here. This is the Stratum port number. So I need to go back to hero miners again and copy the Stratum port number and paste that in like so. And then finally, in this box here that says worker, what you need to do is first paste your Ethereum Classic wallet address and then make a period. And then you can also name your ASIC after that. So I have named mine Loki from the Avengers. I name all of my miners after different Avengers characters. In here, you can also change the coin you're mining from Ethereum to Ethereum Classic. And then I just hit save and apply. And that is literally all you need to do. Your miner will then be up and mining. You can then check on your mining progress on the pool dashboard of your mining pools website. And that is also where you can make changes to your payout settings, like how often the pool will pay you into your wallet. So if you were to order one of these today, it is probably very likely that by the time you get it, we will no longer be able to mine Ethereum. And that is because, as I'm sure you're very aware of, Ethereum is moving away from mining to instead use proof of stake as its security mechanism. Of course, there is still a possibility that that might be delayed even further, but it's probably not looking like that will be the case at the time of recording this video. So because of that, I want to talk about some of the advantages of mining Ethereum Classic on these things. And the first thing I want to bring up is the DAG file size. The DAG is a file that a miner like this one has to store in its memory in order to be able to mine the ETH hash or ETC hash algorithm. And the size of that file grows continuously, which means that as time goes on, you will need miners with bigger and bigger memory. Now, theoretically, if you were able to keep mining Ethereum on these things, since the Ethereum DAG size is already five gigabytes in size and growing rapidly, we would only be able to mine Ethereum on them for another year at most. But Ethereum Classic made a change a while back to reduce its DAG file size, which means that this miner will be able to mine Ethereum Classic until about 2031 or another nine years or so from now. Another potential advantage of mining Ethereum Classic on one of these miners is if you're one of those people that believe that the coin prices will go back up to where their all-time high have been once again. That means the Ethereum Classic you mine can quadruple in price from here, but Ethereum would only just about double in price. Also, and this is just my personal reflection right now, I just feel like there's a lot of uncertainty on the horizon of Ethereum right now. I just feel like there's a lot at stake, no pun intended, with the whole merge actually working. It just feels like there's a risk of something breaking and the whole network going down or something like that, which would obviously be very devastating to the Ethereum network and the Ethereum price. But with Ethereum Classic, nothing like that is planned. And what's awesome about Ethereum Classic is that since it's basically the same coin as Ethereum, all the cool stuff that was coded to work on Ethereum also works on Ethereum Classic. So if Ethereum were to break, you can definitely count on all the DeFi projects and NFT platforms and all of that stuff moving over to Ethereum Classic, which would obviously be very good for the coin. Finally, let's talk about the downsides of these types of miners. And it's the same as for pretty much any ASIC miner in that they are locked in to mine just one mining algorithm. So the opposite of that is obviously when mining on something like a graphics card or a CPU, where you can mine a load of different algorithms. And that of course means that if one algorithm becomes unprofitable to mine you can just switch over to a different algorithm and mine that instead so of course the trade-off there is that if you're mining with one of these you're locked in to mine just one specific algorithm but since they are purpose-built for that specific algorithm, it can be way more efficient than a GPU or CPU on that algorithm, as we talked about earlier. The other general downside to ASICs is that they're only ever really worth money when they are profitable. And that, again, is as opposed to something like a graphics card that you can still sell to a gamer or 
anyone else that's looking to build a PC, even if it's profitable to mine on that graphics card or not. But nobody would want to pay very much money at all for a secondhand ASIC that cannot mine anything profitably. So really what it does come down to in the end is whether you personally have faith in the coin projects that these things can mine. And of course, that is completely up to you. But that's it. Now, if you enjoyed this video, then please give it one of these. And if you like the look of these miners, you can check them out at iPolo's website. I'll leave a link for that in the description of this video. But what you got to do now is you got to click on one of those videos on the screen because this video is over. You can also click the picture on my face to subscribe to the channel. I'd really appreciate that. But yeah, go click on one of those videos and I'll see you there. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye bye.